Megan Hicks of I Run Far, and it's the day after the 2016 Trans Volcania Ultra Marathon. I'm with women's champion Eden Nielsen. Good morning and congratulations. Thank you very much. It's the morning after the race. How did you wake up feeling today? Um, yeah, I haven't really woken up this morning. <laughs> I was awake the entire night. Oh, and you felt, didn't sleep? Felt kind of uh, sore and uh, just, yeah, you know, all the small uh, scars and start to ache. And uh, I was also really hungry. So <laughs> I went up early this morning and had breakfast. <laughs> and You're had a the swim. first one there knocking yes. on the door. <laughs> Let me in for the food. So you have you are fairly new to the ultra running uh, scene. You ran the Ultra Vassin 90k last fall, which is a little bit longer in distance but shorter in time. Yesterday was as long as you've run yet. How 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 did it feel to be out there for so long? Actually, I, I felt good the whole time. Okay. Like uh, uh, I think I learned something from um, Ultra Vasan that uh, I started to take energy too late. Like I, okay. I felt I had energy around like 45k, and then you, and I realized like uh, you're still running, but it's so easy to to just uh, step down and run a little bit slower. Okay, so this time I tried to. Uh, be regular all the time, just yes, looking at the clock and don't feel like, oh, am I hungry or thirsty? Yes, just like to empty the two bottles until next uh, station and uh, yeah. have more uh, gale. So uh, I felt uh, I had good energy and could push the entire race and um, so I'm happy with that. Awesome. You are relatively new to the sport of, of trail running, but people who are fans of track and field will know you as a as an American collegiate, a standout collegiate runner in America. You race for NAU. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So talk about talk about your beginnings with the sport. Did you compete, um, or how did you compete in Sweden in your home prior to coming to race in the U.S. And yeah, I, I started uh, as a kid, like uh, my parents run and uh, Both really, of your folks still? Yeah, okay. I'm really active in my home club, so I started early as a kid to, to just do races and I did um, other track and field events also, like uh, just training with the club. Uh -huh. But then when you get a little bit older, of course, you notice like you better to run and uh, yeah, started training more and more, and in uh, high school I went to, to another town to get, uh, yeah, track and field high school to get some more help with the uh, training uh, after school. So, so that was really nice for me because that's the age when uh, people usually quit, and right. I was quite by myself uh, as like when I was 13, 14 in in my hometown. So. I thought it was just great, you know, you, you go to place and you have friends to run with and a coach and right. gives you workouts because right. I, I kind of gone from, when I was 13, 14, I decided my own workouts, I could go to a track and just like make up something and do it. <laughs> and then I felt like, so, oh, you, you have someone to talk about the workout and you have people to run with and for me it was great and university then was just a, a keep going of that, of a, um, yeah, easy to train, a nice life too. You must have been, um, I don't know anything about your high school level running, but you must have had some noteworthy performances in order to be scouted and, and brought across to run in America. Yeah, I was one of the best uh, like uh, juniors in, in Sweden and okay. I run uh, some uh, European uh, cross country championships and uh, I wasn't like uh, super good like one of the I think it was it's funny like I think I've been easier later on to make the national team as a like growing up and when I was younger because um, yeah I don't know I wasn't uh, some people train very hard very early and they super good when they are like 14 15 right right I was good but I wasn't like a standout or like uh, yeah G good enough to get noticed I don't yeah, know <laughs> yes and then when you came and competed at NAU, you were a, a steeplechase standout. Uh, yes, I, I did uh, mainly the steeplechase and, okay. and the 5K, and, and steeplechase was uh, yeah, uh, quite new, and I was one of the first one in Sweden to, to start competing in right. it, and I ran in the first race in Sweden, it was ever organized in the steeplechase. That's awesome. So, so it, it's uh, really nice to to see how it was just growing and growing, like to, 
to be quite uh, yeah bad technique in the beginning to be really good competitive right. racing right. in the steeplechase. There are uh, several of you who are now competing in trail running who did collegiate steeplechasing. It makes me think if there's something that draws a person to wanting to race the steeplechase on the track that then draws them to trail running, kind of the adventurous aspect of it. Yeah, I think a little bit like uh, maybe both deeper chase and cross country and right. and also this it's a little bit um, I noticed the same with the, the planning like to uh, make a barrier and also maybe sometimes the planning when you uh, you're footing and yeah, uh, yeah. on the trails and yeah. I think also it's a little bit in steeplechase you never feel like oh I just feel so easy and then I can <laughs> kick, kick in like you can do maybe a, a flat race right. like you, you have to work the whole time and it's the same with I think uh, cross country and trail running you you just have to to be more uh, <laughs> like to suffer a little bit more. Right, I mean. right. <laughs> How did you ever find your way from doing events that are like 3K and 5K long to something that was 75K yesterday? Yeah, it was. I had a, a big uh, break actually because after uh, I finished um, university, I went back to Sweden and then it was the time I really wanted to go for running and you know train even harder and go to the Olympics and, and uh, yeah, you. you you want to to keep pushing it, uh, and then all my problems started. Like I, I had so many years with different injuries, okay. and um, the final uh, blow was that I got a serious hip injury. So uh -huh. I had to completely stop, and I didn't uh, run at all uh, for five years, oh. except for a few times a year, oh. maybe. Like so, it was actually first last summer I started to race or run again, and. Um, then I felt like, okay, of course, it gone so many years, it's not uh, an option to start running track again. Like, and right. I don't think uh, my body could handle it either. Like, uh, it was too hard or, um, yeah. So did I wasn't you... motivated to that either, right. to run slower times on the, the track. Like, it's, right. uh, so then I was like, oh, I always like to be outside hiking a lot. And even when I was injured, I traveled a lot. And, then I was usually hiking when I went to nice countries like yeah, and, uh, with mountains. So I always really loved uh, to be in the mountains and uh, to be in the forest and on trails. And uh, even when I was a track runner, I, I run most of my uh, uh, trainings on, on trails. And oh yeah. Soft, yeah. Okay. Even if, maybe not so steep like now up right, and down, right. but, but still I the always soft enjoy tracks. soft. Yeah. Okay. I never really enjoyed running on the road. And, <laughs> So um, not, when I started to run last summer, I did a little bit of everything. I, I did, you know, road races, half marathons, 10Ks. I did some uh, shorter mountain races in Sweden and Norway. So I was just happy to, to race again. Like, uh, yeah. You raced Trumpso last year. No, I didn't. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then you raced. It was a was it a, a mountain marathon? Uh, yes, one okay. in in, uh, in Sweden. In it's Sweden. Fjell marathon uh, okay. one in in order. And did you just pick that one because you were just trying out lots of different races, or did somebody tell you to try mountain, like mount, that distance of um, mountain running, or that specific race? I wanted to run for a few years, okay. but uh, I never really worked out like because I. Yeah, I got injured again and had problems, and then last summer I could finally do it. So okay. then I was a little bit behind, and then I caught up right in the end and uh, got to win it. So that was really nice because it's it's the biggest uh, mountain marathon in Sweden, like the biggest. Right. That was yeah, a lot of people. It's the next step. They have run the marathon, and then it's like oh, nice to to try this. Kind of a, a bucket list thing for people in Sweden, right? Yes, a little bit. I, yeah. I think it starts now when people uh, experience pains. And, uh, yeah. I want to ask you about your race yesterday. When the when the race started, you just sort of headed out and did your own thing the entire day. day. You were not with any other girls the whole time, is that right? Yes, it's like I just saw uh, Mira and Anna in the beginning. I passed them, but, uh, and then... Uh, I was actually not, it was not until halfway to um, uh, El Pilar I knew I was in the lead because okay. in the beginning it's dark, it's, it's dark. so many guys and you don't know, maybe someone set out, I thought maybe yeah. I'm in the lead but I wasn't really sure, like 
But then when you can see longer and it starts to get light, you're just like, oh, no one can be so far ahead. It's but like, I can't yeah. see them right no, now. No, no, it's like, yeah. So uh, then I just had to do it. Like I went out hard and then you just have to keep pushing. It's not, it wasn't really my race plan. Okay. That was to, to be more uh, uh, with the people at, until El, El Pilar. Because and I didn't then start. Yeah, because I didn't think I was going to be so strong in the in the sand okay. and just uphill because I never considered myself as a strong uphill runner like uh, okay. I always was bad in the uphill when I ran cross country <laughs> so uh, I thought like the middle part would be my best part where I had to push a little bit huh. so but now the the whole race was more consistent and I haven't seen the the checkpoints the times but it felt like it was just getting more and more okay but I, I I got I didn't get any good really like someone says like oh I got like oh it was three minutes in El Pilar and then uh, in the end they was like oh you like five minutes and I felt like five minutes is not so much when you have all the downhill right. and build. I mean that could easily change so yeah. I, I was never really until I get uh, past as a court and knew I, I had a good lead that it felt uh, yeah, at El Pilar, I mean, you were a couple minutes in front of the other girls, and it was sort of Ida, and then crickets chirping for a couple minutes, and then bam, 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 kind of the women in a line yeah. behind each other. And so already, at least from my perspective, at El Pilar, you had sort of set yourself in front of the other girls, but it didn't feel that way to you. You were just sort of doing your own thing. Yeah, because I didn't know, like, uh, of course, sometimes when you can see back, you see that you don't see anyone, but right. it's it's nice to have more, uh, but it's hard for people to tell also minutes, because it, the the course is so spread out, and you right. don't get good reports, and right. uh, you, you just have, my feeling was good, and I knew I was passing some guys, so I felt like I, I'm not going slow at least. Right. Uh, yet. So, They're not so passing to, me yeah, yet. So, so that is a good feeling, like when you know you, you still feel strong. Yeah. This race course has lots of different parts to it. There's an incredible amount of mostly runnable climbing. Mm -hmm. There's some, you know, sort of rolling, but fairly rocky and rubbly terrain. There's that huge descent. And then there's kind of that evil finish of having to run through the wash and climb back to the city. What parts of the course did you really like yesterday? Like, you said you were you were surprised that the climbing suited you. Mm -hmm. What else surprised you? I really like this a little bit rolling when you can uh, run and you feel like you have a good speed and it's like this narrow trail and you go along uh, the edge and uh, it's a lot of good parts. Uh, I think. Yeah, even the part coming down towards El Pilar is very nice, and then also, yeah, the whole ridge has many nice spot, uh, spots, I think, to run on. How did that um, that ridge up at 8,000 feet feel to you? You come from a, a fairly low altitude country. Yeah, like, actually, yeah, I stayed in Chamonix the whole winter, so oh, then I have okay. been up. No problem then. So, um, and, uh, alt like, of course, in the beginning, it, it was tough again, because it was so many years since... I lived in Flagstaff and, yeah. and trained on altitude, but right. I always had quite easy to adapt to, to altitude. So this time I didn't feel uh, when I was, yeah, I didn't notice too much difference. Like, uh, because you're always uh, breathing hard and tight when you climb back hill. Right. And it's hard to tell, yeah, you can't really know. It's hard down there when you start also in the, in the sand right. climbing back hill. So. Yeah, cl yeah, I'd say climbing sea level at sea level through the sand is kind of like being at altitude, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Did you let yourself, like, say you got to Tazacourt and your crew tells you you now have a good lead and you just have this kind of evil climb back up to the finish. Did you let yourself start sort of celebrating and let it sink in that you're about to win a, a very competitive trail ultra? No, I felt a little bit more secure of the win there. Okay. And like when people saw this, like, oh, the, the champion and the cheering. But I uh, I think it was right in the end when I I started to suffer really much in that okay. game because also mentally you're almost there. And then I got really tired all, all of a sudden. Like you okay. have the, so, so in that, the, the last hill, I, I had to walk sometimes because I was like, ah, oh, I was so out of breath. and. Uh, 
then it's so long finish also mm -hmm. and uh, a really long flat finish yeah it? and, and I, I, people just yes, want to uh, uh, clap your hands and I felt so gross I had folds I had blood all <laughs> over and you tried to <laughs> say yeah, I do everything <laughs> fist bump <laughs> yeah yeah I tried to do this <laughs> this side instead That's but that me. also when you're quite exhausted and then you're so happy that everyone is cheering but it's also quite tough with so many people when you're uh, on the, the border <laughs> right when you cross the finish line you had your eyes on the clock were you just checking out the time or did you have your eye on the course record or? I didn't think of the course record at okay. all before the race, but uh, I had a plan a little bit. Um, it's like, oh, I need to run at least under nine, uh, nine hours. And uh, then most of my guys like, oh, I can't be about three hours to LPR. And I had like 2.45 there. Right. And then I felt like, oh, good time. But then I was a little bit disappointed with the because I mean I run part of the course early in the week and right. I, I knew a little bit how what you could expect to run for, for times to different points mm -hmm. and and then I think it's like oh maybe I can have three hours to the next one but then with that extra aid station totally destroyed the, the course record or like a good time because right. it took uh, t at least 10 extra minutes to go down there and uh, it was yeah that was the only part of the course I didn't like because it's okay. not fine uh, hiking up again on like this loose sand and yeah. along the fence and, yeah. uh, to get back on the track again so um, yeah it was a little bit too bad it's not, it's not the same course as the last years because right. you can't really compare like it's it's an extra right time yeah definitely extra time out yeah. there well my last question for you where are we gonna see you next what will you race this summer um, yeah, the f races I have planned now is uh, the ultra races is uh, Ultra Vasan again okay. in August and then the World Championships in trail running in okay. uh, Portugal and then I have um, a lot of small mm. races in between in Sweden and okay. uh, other things and um, now when it went well maybe uh, some more sky races I don't know we'll see now some more technical and mountainy stuff <laughs> yeah okay. I have to uh, practice that <laughs> Well, congratulations. It looks like you don't have to practice too much. You did just <laughs> fine yesterday. Thank you. Congratulations on your win, Ida. Thanks.